Hello, um, I'm going to talk about DNA sequencing. So first, what is DNA sequencing? DNA sequencing consists of several steps. First step is typically a chemical step where you take some intact DNA, like blood samples, put it into a machine, it then tears it apart into smaller fragments and uh, prints out files that have these fragments. Um, to give you a bit an idea of the dimensions, uh, an intact human DNA consists of three billion base pairs. Each base pair is one of the letters G, A, T, or C. And the fragments that come out of these machines are typically about 150 base pairs. This is then typically followed by a software pipeline. And there's many kinds of different pipelines that you may want to express over these fragments. But a typical one is variant calling that is quite often used. So variant calling first does a process called mapping, where it tries to puzzle together the original DNA sequence out of these fragments. And then the second step, after some sorting and some additional steps, the second phase is then called variant calling, where you try to figure out which parts of the DNA are different from that of a normal DMA. Um, these software pipelines uh, have a lot of use cases in clinical diagnostics or in R&D departments of pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical companies, for example, um, and they tend to take a lot of time. We're talking about days of processing time, sometimes. Um, what we've done a couple of years ago is uh, we developed a tool called LPREP together with Janssen Pharmaceuticals and Intel Corporation, um, which is a high-performance tool for preparing such files um, for variant calling. It's a multi-threaded application where we reorganized the software architecture so it can completely run, run in DRAM and take advantage of parallelism. And this allows us to write certain parts of a pipeline up to 10 times faster than standard tools. It's open source. We have a paper about this where we describe the software architecture and so on. Um, the original implementation of this was in Common Lisp. Common Lisp has a couple of great advantages. It's good for prototyping. It's good for moving prototypes to production. However, there were also a couple of problems, especially with memory management. Um, since these files are quite large, tens to hundreds of gigabytes in uncompressed form, um, this puts a lot of uh, stress on the garbage collector when you put all of this in RAM. The garbage collectors in Common Lisp tend to be uh, stop the world garbage collectors, which stop all the threats, which is bad for parallelism. So when you look at the modern landscape of memory management, there's reference counting and concurrent garbage collection. And these are the only mature implementations thereof that we were aware of and that we were able to use. Rust doesn't count and um, Objective-C doesn't count for various reasons. So here are the results. Uh, we used um, an input data set, which is a whole exome data set, 13 gigabytes compressed data. We ran on a two socket machine with 22 cores each. And this is the result. So for C++, with those tools, we got uh, 13 minutes, 38 seconds at 227 gigabytes of RAM. With Java, it looks worse. So there's different garbage collection options for Java. Um, but uh, if it's faster, it uses a ridiculous amount of memory, which can't be used. If it's slower, even then it uses a large amount of memory. So that doesn't really count. And with Go, with the default setting in 1.7, we got uh, 10 minutes, 20 seconds at an amount of RAM that's very close to the lowest. So we were very happy with that, and that's why we moved um, our LPREP tool to Go, published this as open source uh, one month ago. Um, it was easiest to implement the whole thing in Java because of the parallel streams framework, but why we parted this also to Go and also open source this. So you can download this and be happy with this. Thank you very much.